If I tell you the symbols that are used to create a number, can you tell me what the number is? Well, that depends on what number system we're using. If we're using the standard number system that we all know, then I could give you the digits 1 and 2, and you would not know if I was creating the number 12 or 21 with those two digits. We're going to start by looking at the ancient Egyptian number system using hieroglyphs. If you recorded numbers in ancient Egypt, you would be using symbols. This number is 1,333,335. Here it is on a wall. The staff is worth 1. The lotus, 1,000. The god with outstretched arms, 1 million. If there was an ancient Egyptian in our crowd, they would be wondering, why on earth are you guys using the same symbol, 1, for 1, 1,000, and 1 million? They would argue, if you've got a million of anything, why not celebrate? <laughs> Raise your hands! <laughs> and if you just have one of something, well, that's pretty meager. Shouldn't your symbol reflect that that is pretty meager? So they would be totally confused at why we are using the same symbol for 1, 1,000, and 1 million. One of the interesting things about the Egyptian number system, if you're a teacher, is that if your student mixes up that tadpoles are worth 100,000 and should go to the left of the bent finger, which is worth 10,000, but they mix that up, well, you still know what their number is. So you can correct them. The Egyptian number system is commutative. It doesn't matter the order of the numbers. In fact, you can go to the uh, temple at Karnak, and you can see that numbers are just put in boxes. Here's an example. This is 4,622. So here the number is written vertically, but we still know what it means. al khwarizmi was one of the leading figures responsible for us adopting a place value number system. In that number system, you can't just shuffle up the digits, you can't place them in boxes randomly because the place matters. So the 2 here means 20, but the same symbol 2 over here means 2,000. Order also matters in the Chinese abacus. So here's 2,301, which is different from 2,310. The upper beads are worth 5 and the lower beads are worth 1. You can count all of the beads touching the central bar. This is roughly the population of Shanghai. 23,019,143. Notice that the same 3 pattern means 3 or 3 million, depending on where it is. Notice the 0. Number systems which rely on place value really need this zero. And this abacus system has a pattern of beads which means zero, namely that the central bar doesn't have any beads touching it. Maria Montessori used manipulatives to teach mathematics to children. Does her number system use place value like a Chinese abacus? Or in this respect, is it more similar to the ancient Egyptian number system? The first clue is that like the ancient Egyptian number system, it lacks a symbol for zero. The second clue is that, like the ancient Egyptian number system, you could drop all the blocks and someone could still figure out what number you had built. So here I've scrambled them all. Can you figure out what number I had built? Of course you can. The number is 2,397. Try doing that for a scrambled number in the Arabic number system, and you can just see how important place value is. Go ahead, figure out what number I've scrambled here. You can't. There's many possibilities. Ha! Ah! Ah! Hey,